to this one. Right, welcome to another IELTS speaking practice video by IELTS Johnny. And today, Miss Antu is going to do her speaking practice. All right, so Miss Tu, let's start first with part one. So let's start with something that. Okay, so let's start with number 10 TV programs. So, what kind of TV programs do you like? Well, to be honest, I do not really, I do not usually watch TV programs. No, mostly me too. I. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I've not been watching TV for like 14 something years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I rely on my phone or my computer to you watch. You rely on, you rely on, yeah. Yeah, you. I rely on those. And I think it's not really necessary for me to watch necessary. TV programs. It's not so, ne yeah. necessary for me. I see. So do you know, so what do you think about game shows? reality tv shows documentary uh, dramas what do you think about them those kind of programs you can talk about each of them well i think um each of them like gives me a uh, gives gives me a uh... gives me uh, basically each of them serve a different purpose right I mean, all can like um, satisfy me, can entertain me, uh, but um, particularly game shows, particularly, or, uh, particularly uh, game shows or reality TV shows, they are uh, designed to like entertain people. So they are extremely funny to me. Mm -hmm. um, and about documentary, I think it's it. it uh, they gives me uh, they give me knowledge about mm. the world around me and mm. about dramas they I think they um, evoked my curiosity in some way so yeah that's what I think about those kind of TV programs right I see do you often see a lot of game shows in Vietnam and what do you think about them? Well, I used to. There was a game show called The Running Man. Actually, it was um, a Korean one, but uh, in Vietnam, we also have that um, game show. And I used to, like, I was, I think I was pretty much uh, obsessed with it. And I think it was really, really fun. I, w I used to look forward to watching it every single week. So, yeah. I see. So do you often watch programs on the TV or on your cell phone? On my cell phone, definitely. I think watching programs on my phone gives me, it makes, uh, I feel more comfortable and more, much more convenient to watch uh, programs on my phone rather than on the TV because um, thanks to my phone, I mean, I can carry it wherever I go, but the TV is a bit um, big and, you know, it's not really convenient to carry around. Mm -hmm. So mostly I will spend my time watching programs on my cell phone. I see. So do you like watching the same kind of program all the time? Mm, definitely no. I think watching the same kind of program all the time will like uh, will make me feel bored uh, because I think they have cliche yeah, yeah. they they are cliches and they mm, and they just have it's too this cliche um, right it's just too cliche yeah. right right so I see but um, sometimes we need to um, watch other kind of programs to uh, expand our knowledge and perspective, you know, or viewpoint about matters, you know. 
Now, so do you talk to your friends about a program you watched? Well, I think it depends. Sometimes me, um, my friends watch the same program as I do. So when that case happens, uh, I, I will like discuss with them about those programs and like have a really fun chat. Uh, but on the other hand, when sometimes I do watch programs that my friends do not usually fancy it. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just um, like keep it to myself. Mm -hmm. You keep them to yourself, I see. Because sometimes when you talk about programs with your friends, sometimes they judge you, you know? Sometimes they judge you and depending on that, they decide to not hang out with you or something like that. Sometimes it happened that way, you know? So differences do exist and people tend to um, kind of look at the differences and judge you, you know? Especially when it comes to friendship, I think. Now, so what do you think about TV programs in Vietnam, in your country? Well, I think um, in my country, there are a variety of TV programs I can watch. And they can be um, uh, game shows or um, documentaries. And I think anyone, uh, each one of them, like, always gives people, uh, always gives me a different feeling. And I think it's to watch to watch them is actually pretty interesting to me okay so i mean the quality of tv programs in your country do you think compare with other countries for programs do you think is it better is it worse I think um, sometimes it's better, but sometimes it's uh, worse. Mm. Yes. There are some Vietnamese films that I think um, whose plot is pretty um, predictable and sometimes uh, the actors do not convey, cannot express much, uh, many feelings to the audiences. But uh, films from another from other countries, they can do it. They can do it uh, much better than um, Vietnamese actors, I think. But mm. also, uh, yeah, the opposite. Uh, the uh, but sometimes, yeah, it's uh, better for Vietnam, and sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. I see. So do you prefer international TV programs or national ones? <clears throat> uh, well, I think I like both international TV programs and uh, national ones because mm -hmm. um, each type of uh, program will, will have a different, uh, will give me different feelings. Uh, sometimes the international TV programs can Mm, strengthen can um, broaden my knowledge about the culture or the life of people there uh, but the national ones also give me knowledge about sometimes maybe about my uh, country's history or you know the how people live in many areas in my country so I think I like both of the TV programs. I see. Right. Okay, let's go to another one. <clears throat> okay, so that was number 10. Um, right. I would like you to try another one, which is... Um, barbecues. Barbecue. So, do you remember the last time you had a barbecue? Actually, I think it was um, just a few weeks ago when I went on a trip with my class. We went on a two-day two -day trip and 
um, in the evening we had barbecue together and it was really fun and the food is absolutely delicious was mm -hmm. I see. So how often do you have a barbecue then? I think I do not often have barbecue because in the city where I live, I think the price of meat is pretty like uh, pretty high. So unless there is an a special occasion, I will not I, I cannot <laughs> have a barbecue at all. Right, so would you prefer to have a barbecue with your family or your friends? Well, I think I would prefer to have a barbecue with my family. Well, because in my family, I am still, I'm still a child in their eyes. So yeah, most of the time I will like, they will want to take care of me but when i'm with my friends it's always me who like take care of them and yeah of course i really want to be taken care of so mm -hmm. yeah i want to have barbecue with my family more than with my friends i see so it's often like you have things to talk about more with your friends especially at your age i think now and it's also more fun too now, so did you have barbecues when you were a child? Mm, actually, when I was a child, I didn't have barbecues. The reason is that um, when I was small, I didn't like I didn't like the taste of uh, meat. So mostly when when my family have barbecue when my family had barbecues I would um, choose another uh, another dish and I wouldn't have any taste of barbecues is my it was um, it's, yeah mm. because I didn't like the taste you didn't like the taste of grilled meat you know you think Sometimes grilled meat, I, it gives me the feeling of, uh, you know, I feel very dried out. And I need to drink even more water because of that, you know, and I don't feel healthy. I feel drained out as well if, uh, when I um, eat like grilled stuff, grilled things. <clears throat> so I understand exactly what you feel about that. So do people in Vietnam like to have barbecues? Well, I think people in my country like to have barbecues. Well, the first reason is that um, the quality of the meat has like has uh, improved. Uh, has improved. So um, people would want to like uh, taste it as much as possible because because it is actually delicious. And moreover, the second reason is that I think barbecues serve as a way for people to like mm, strengthen their mm, family or friends, family bond or like mm, strengthen the relationships with friends. I think it's also a good way to mm, build up strong relationships with people around you through Food, barbecues. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Okay, that's good enough for part one. Let's go to part two and part three now. <clears throat> so I would like you to try a very classic uh, topics here. Number two, describe a famous person you are interested in. You should say who he or she is. Um, How you know actually, what? I think we did this one we did before. did this one before, right? So number one, did we do that already? A singer or actor? Did we do this one? 
No. Because sometimes, no. because sometimes I forgot to write down. No? So it's better if you let me know, I think. No, we just did. Um... Okay, so let's do number one then. Your favorite singer or actor, so basically the scope of this question is much more narrow. So it's only about singer or actor. Cái phạm vi câu này nó nhỏ hơn nhiều. Chỉ là ca sĩ diễn viên thôi. Describe your favorite singer or actor. You should say who he or she is, what his or her personality is like. Do you like, uh, how do you know about this person? And explain why he or she is your favorite. And then look at part three about singers or actors. Do you think your favorite singer or actor is good? And why? Good him and good in their fields. Because some people, they are famous, but or they are your favorite, not because of their acting or their singing, you know? Maybe because of what they said, maybe because of their ideology or maybe their mindset, you know? Maybe because of what they say is in their mindset. Uh, maybe because of their charity work. Or maybe because of their personality that you like them, that makes you like them. But not necessarily, not necessarily good in their fields. Không nhất thiết là họ phải giỏi trong ngành của họ nha. So, um, next one, do singers or actors? And you should give examples again. Now, do singer or actors play an important role in your country? Think about <clears throat> think about uh, what they can contribute to movies. Think about uh, what they can contribute online, you know? So of course, if you are a singer or actors, you do have some kind of social standing or social status, relatively higher than a normal citizen, you know? Nếu mà mình là ca sĩ, diễn viên thì đương nhiên là cái cái trạng địa vị xã hội của mình đó, đương nhiên nó hơi hơi cao hơn chút xíu người thường thường. People will, are willing to listen to you more than cousin, you know. And think about the fact that uh, whatever you say, people will take it more seriously than if you are nobody. If you are a nobody, people will not take it seriously. But if you are singer actors, of course, you are at a higher position than a normal citizen to in order to um you are at a relatively higher position a vị thế vị thế tương đối cao hơn you're at a relatively high position than a normal citizen you know so people will listen to you so it means that you can uh, you can call for sponsors. Kêu gọi tài trợ. You can call for sponsorship. You can basically um, ask people to support your cause. Ask people to support a social cause. Một phong trào xã hội. yêu cầu có thể có kêu gọi con người ta ủng hộ cái như ý một cái yêu phong trào xã hội gì đó. You can ask people to support a social cause because you have the voice, you know, bạn có tiếng nói. You have the voice that people are willing to listen to. So think about that one. Okay, how do you think that celebrities now have a lot of income? Bạn nghĩ làm thế nào những người nổi tiếng bây giờ có rất nhiều thu nhập? How? So basically, do they work a lot? Do they work hard? Through which channels? Thông qua những kênh nào mà họ có nhiều tiền nhỉ? So think about uh, advertisement or advertising ngành quảng cáo. Think about um, getting involved in movies, like um, acting in movies. Think about, of course, a lot of celebrities in Vietnam, they sell uh, products, you know, bán kim trộn. <laughs> they sell, they sell uh, products like beauty products. They sell beauty products, something like that. Think about those things. And of course, some celebrities, they open a business on their own, you know. 
using their uh, social standing, they open a business, open a business, and they run their own businesses, you know, using their uh, high social status. Mở doanh nghiệp sử dụng cái um, địa vị xã hội cao của họ. Well, think about those things and give examples. Do people prefer to listen to traditional music or foreign music in your country and why? Think about why people prefer to listen to that kind of music and give examples like Korean, Japanese, US, UK music, Chinese music, something like that. Why do people prefer that? You need to dig deep into the reason why, you know. Phải đi sâu vào cái vấn đề tại sao người ta thích, mình thích như vậy. Chứ này. Is it because they can... Uh, They can relate to the music better. Họ có thể cảm được cái nhạc đã tốt hơn chứ? They can feel the music better, is it? Or is it because... Um, is it because it reflects the music? Reflects uh, truthfully their feelings and their living environment. Có phải cái âm nhạc đó nó phản ánh một cách rất là trung thực cái cảm xúc của họ và cái môi trường sống của họ không? Or something like that. Alright, you have some time to think. Okay, please describe your favorite singer or actor. So I'm going to talk about Taylor Swift, who is my all-time favorite singer. She is famous for her songs and albums, many hit songs and albums. And she used to pursue a career in country music, but now she has turned to pop and she has really been successful as well. As far as I know, she is a really kind person who always cares about her fans. And also she She gets involved in some charity, but it, there is little known about that, but there are rumors that she, uh, that she has charities for uh, the rest fortunate people. When I was, when I was uh, in grade seven, I heard a song A, few, a really famous song of her, Love Story, which catch my ears immediately mm -hmm. due to its catchy melody and its beautiful lyrics. And the reason why she is my favorite is because not only does she have a really sweet and amazing voice, but she also has a talent for composing songs and creating ly lyrics that are related to many people. Most of her songs, of her lyrics, come from her own life experiences, so they are very easy to, they, so they are very relatable to many people. And Each time, every time I listen to any of her songs, they always make me feel happy and always bring a positive feeling to my mind. And yeah, then that's why I choose her to be my favorite singer. Okay, I see. Now, do you think your favorite singer or actor is good in their fields and why? <clears throat> well... I think it's uh, not really necess necessary mm -hmm. for singers or actors to be good in their fields. Mm -hmm. But um, however, they have to. They have to. Um, they have to have some talent to of be course. a singer or an actor. But maybe not as good. Not as not as good as others, and. They and therefore they do not have to be good in their fields, but mm -hmm. instead 
they can contribute more to through other activities mm, maybe they're they maybe they do charity work or they have the good mindset and they like they help to motivate many people through their speeches through their experiences and also they their personality is important because even when you are excellent at something but you do not have a good personality and you always treat people badly i think this will put an end to your career mm -hmm. uh, for example there is a singer in vietnam chi pu mm. she is not extremely good at singing but people say that her singing is terrible it's yeah, catastrophic yeah, actually <laughs> Uh, and she's not really good at singing, but no. she like she entered another uh, market and she uh, attended a competition in China. And actually, she actually she was successful at that contest, and she was relatively famous in that area so i think it it is not really necessary for singers or actors to be good in the fields but can be in other aspects mm -hmm. i see now, so do singers or actors play an important role in your country? Uh, definitely. I think that singers and actors do play, an, uh, do play a significant role in my country due to two reasons. Uh, first is about their... Uh, is it, first, it is that they entertain people. Uh -huh. uh, it's... Uh, it's the showbiz that people always are always attracted to and sometimes uh, songs and movies do like comfort people in some way comfort like, comfort people in the some verb way. is to comfort someone movies and um what do you say movies and what movies and like songs uh -huh. yeah thank you movies and songs do comfort people somehow how do they do that uh, maybe they people can relate to the lyrics or the emotions that mm. uh, they convey in their songs and in the films and it and when you like relate to something it gives you a good feeling like you know that you are not alone in your life like there are someone else who feels the exact same the way the exact the exact same way that you do so mm -hmm. i think it's a really important mental support for mm -hmm. someone and the second reason is that uh, when our singers or actors they call for sponsorship to like do charity work uh, they are. I think they are more taken more ser seriously than um, ordinary people because their social status. They are already famous, so many people will. Uh, many people will um, believe them for what they do. They will. They will believe that they are. The famous people are. A little more trustworthy than others. So when calling for sponsorship or uh, they will receive more, res uh, they will receive more support from other people. Mm, I see. 
Now, how do you think the celebrities now have a lot of income? What do you think? Well, celebrities now, they have a lot of income because they involve themselves in a wide range of um, work and they work really, really hard to make money. Uh, some, there are many uh, celebrities nowadays, they sometimes they do, sometimes at uh, YouTube, uh, celebrities nowadays, they now can become YouTube uh, YouTubers. They mm -hmm. have their own channels or it can be through advertising. Mm, they can be models or they can act in movies or they build their own um, companies. Uh, many, there are many, I think nowadays uh, each celebrity will have their own uh, YouTube channel, social network. Uh, so, uh, and because they are famous, many people will like uh, subscribe to their channels. And mm -hmm. when, whenever they upload an, a video, they will get a lot of viewers. They will get a lot of views. And I think it's pretty easy for them to uh, make money through this way due to their fans or their... Their followers, you mean? Yeah, their followers. Through their large number of followers who are so um who, who are just so uh how can i say hyped whenever their favorite celebrities appear on stage and they are so loyal to their celebrities too you know it's called loyal fans i do have some loyal fans we do because i do play music you know and yeah i'm kind of more or less relatively well known on online i think i mean it might not look like it but i think it was last year i, I think it was half a year ago when i went out to eat somebody stopped me and they asked me if i was uh, mr johnny ailes online and was like wow some recognition now huh <laughs> you know so you are you're right it's because of uh, their fame that people come to them for uh, a lot of things. But understand this. Celebrities have to work so hard, you know. Look at how Taylor Swift prepared her The Eras Tour. Six months. She has been working so, so hard. Inhumanly hard, you know. Now, so... Do people prefer to listen to traditional music or foreign music in your country and why? Well, I think it depends on each individual. Well, um, traditional music, it evokes emotions of the country for many people. And it serves as a way to connect people with their culture. Or sometimes, you know, traditional music is a way to remind people of the past of many elderly i mean there yeah. are many many older people who yeah. like listening to traditional music because they remind them of their past of uh, of war or of their the time when things were much more simpler it reminds them so basically it reminds them of the of the old time when many things were simpler and life was different life was not so hectic like these days right yes of course life back then was very different it was way way more um <clears throat> simpler all right, so uh, how about like um, the invasion of the like, K-pop music? You know, it's like an inv invasion, actually. Because yeah, it it's like an invasion of culture. It's like a cultural invasion of uh, K-pop uh, into Vietnam. What do you think about that? 
does it cause uh is that the reason why so many young people listen to k-pop music these days and what do you think about it i think the reason is that they feel um, re relatable to the songs mm. uh, they are also attracted because of the uh, of the unique concepts or the um, uh, or like Sometimes they are attracted because of the um, large advertising of many companies who um, operate those uh, K-pop groups, and they feel drawn to them. So, um, and when they listen to the songs, and I think they also have to like feel some kind of emotion so that they mm -hmm. will follow the kind of um, music mm, long mm. and it uh, and k-pop has been extremely popular in vietnam for like maybe uh for the past 10 years and there are some famous groups like uh, bts or blackpink they are extremely big in my country and I think it's also um, a good thing that people listen to uh, songs that are from different countries because um, I think it can help to bridge the gap between cultures. Uh, people will know more about you know more about the the other countries mm -hmm. and their music. So I think it's a good thing as well. Mm. Okay, let's move on to another one. <clears throat> All right, so let's try um, something all the way here. Let's try 57. Describe a thing you refuse to land. <clears throat> you should say what a thing was. Who wanted to borrow it from you? Why he or she wanted to borrow it from you? And explain why you refused him or her. And then part three of borrowing or lending things. What situation should people lend things to others and why? I think you do know very well the answer to this question. So what situation should people borrow things from others and why? So think about some objects that can be very expensive to buy but you only use it for sometimes like for example wedding dress right Louis? wedding dress i mean you it's, it's not worth it to just buy a wedding dress right so because you only wear it once or twice maximum twice so people often hire a wedding dress but hiring is basically the same as borrowing things and then you pay them right so think about that. <clears throat> um, there are objects that you only use once or twice, but it's vital. And I think it's okay to borrow things from others. Like for example, um, what's it called? A vacuum cleaner. Like some special vacuum cleaner, they can have a function to clean your sofa or to uh, clean your uh, rug and um, carpets and things like that, you know? But you only do it like twice per year or something like that. But investing in a machine like that is actually money. So it's, um, so actually it's better to borrow from others so, or maybe a drill, you know? You only drill things maybe once per year or maybe less than that. So buying a drill and let it, um let it uh collect dust để nó phủi bụi để, để nó, nó bị phủ bụi lên let it collect dust is not really an exactly a fancy thing isn't it how about books you know if you buy books you read it yes what would happen if uh, you finish reading it it will catch dust a lot and other people might benefit benefit from reading it right so think about some objects like that <clears throat> All right, so why is lending money to others a risky thing to do? 
Well, you know how it is lending money and you will lose the friend, lose all the money as well. But sometimes there are dramas with the money, right? Especially in the Vietnamese society. Xã hội Việt Nam là đúng là khác tiếng với vấn đề mượn tiền luôn á. Vietnamese society is actually notorious for problems related to lending money. So you should be very, very careful. If you don't want to lose your friend and lose the money at the same time. You know? And now, should people borrow money to buy expensive things? Why, why not? So think about what expensive things you are talking about. Like, for example, if you borrow money from people to buy a house or a, an apartment, it might take a very long time to uh, <clears throat> to pay them back, isn't it? But think about some people, they just borrow money to buy expensive things because they want to own those expensive things. And they refuse to give you back the money, you know. And some people, they just buy expensive things like a very bad habit, you know. Nhiều người có thói quen mượn tiền không bao giờ trả nha. Some people, they have a very bad habit of borrow, borrowing money continuously from people to people and they never give it back. And they think that others have the responsibility to take care of their needs, you know. Một số người có cái tư tưởng vậy đó. Những người khác có nghĩa vụ phải chu cấp cho những cái nhu cầu của họ. You know, some people, they're just weird. Now, so think about the bad thing and the good thing that can come from this one, you know. Có cái lợi cái hại gì không? Okay, sometimes a thing. Now, please describe a thing, a thing you refuse to lend. Well, so the thing I refused to lend was my bicycle. Uh, well, a friend of mine who was not really close to me asked to borrow my bicycle for the second time. Uh, she time, said, seriously? She said she was going out with her friends, with her other friends, and she needed a vehicle to travel with them. And I refused because the first time she used my bike, when she returned to me, it was about a week after she used it, although she didn't uh, use it all the all the time, but she delayed to return it to me. And when I received the bike, the tires were flat, and there was something wrong with the there was something wrong with my bike, and I couldn't use it. And I had to spend some money in order to like fix it to for me to use it again. Mm -hmm. And when I told her about that, she said, uh, we are friends, we are friends. So I think uh, those uh, little mistakes from, so, uh, and she said that uh, because we were friends, so the little, the little mistakes that she made were not too big and it was just mm -hmm. a bicycle. So she had no responsibility in that. And yeah, that's why I cannot let her use my bicycle anymore. You should never lend people things because they are very, they're very irresponsible people. They're unreliable. You should never lend them anything. Okay, such a life lesson, isn't it? Now, so what situation should people lend things to others and why? Well, I think there are many situations when people should lend things to other. Well, it it can be when they when their friends or the family are in need, and then they have to lend them some money or uh, some support that they need. Uh, but however, uh, however, I think that when people lend up when people lend <clears throat> their friends or family something they should be 
sure sure that uh, that person is reliable enough? able to what yeah reliable and can be trusted and not going to um, it's not uh, going to forget the help and then not returning it right yes because there are many uh, cases when you lend your friends or families or relatives something and then they forget it and the, you never see that object or the money that you give mm -hmm. to them again and they just um, say that because we're close and we do not and it feels like we have to take care of them and they do not have to return it to us mm -hmm. There you go. I see. But this question talk about what situation should people lend things to others. I think you should focus on like the objects that you can lend to others to help them, or you should focus on like uh, some situations in which people need urgent help. You know. Okay. Would you would you do this one again? Maybe um, try to focus on um, how can I say. Like for an emergency situation, like for example, if your friends is in a bad situation, is in an accident, or in a, let's say a car accident or a bike accident, and or they have to go to the hospital because uh, they have to treat some illnesses, you know, think about that. Those are very dire situations indeed, very dire situation, and they need the money. They need all the help they can get, you know? So, yes. In those situations, I would lend people things. So, think about <clears throat> situation of emergency. Like, for example, um, if someone fell down on their bikes and they hurt their knees and they hurt their legs and they are bleeding, you should definitely... Give, yeah, give them your tissue paper and everything to help them deal with the accident, right? Like an emergency help, you know? Think about those situations. And, um, okay, can you try this question again? What situation should people lend things to others and why? You should not focus too much on not lending, you know? Should focus on what situation, okay? Đừng tập trung quá nhiều vào chuyện không cho mượn mà nên tập trung vào chuyện là tình huống nào thì nên cho mượn nha. Yeah. Okay, let's try it again. So there are many situations that people should lend things to others. For example, in urgent situations, when your uh, when someone is, when your friends or your families are I have a, have an accident and they need um, the money or the support that uh, you have to um, help them. Uh, I think it's when we should lend them some money or maybe buy them some items that will help them to get through the hardships. Um, also, sometimes when when we even when we meet a stranger and they are in a in a terrible in a terrible situation maybe they uh, maybe they need um, some medical treatment i think or some food i think we can um, give them the give them we can give them food for free of course because they need it to survive, isn't it? And our kindness, but actually it's not lending, it's actually giving them, you know, and not expecting it back. But I think, yeah, you can answer it that way. Can you continue, please? Hello? Uh, I Or when you, when someone uh, need to borrow your vehicles because they 
are late or they have to go somewhere uh, immediately we, uh, I think it's also I think it's also a situation when people can should lend the should lend things to others mm -hmm. I okay. think that's Let's all. try another question now. What situation should people borrow things from others and why? Well, uh, people should borrow things from others when they have to use um, some objects that they do not normally use. Maybe they just use that once or twice in their life. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's um, maybe it's a wedding dress. Yeah, you only marry, you only get married about one or twice in your life. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not really necessary to buy necessary 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 to buy a big and expensive one, but mm -hmm. you can borrow it from other people. And I think uh, they will gladly give it to you. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you can borrow uh, clothes or vehicles uh, from other people mm -hmm. because there are many special special occasions when you have to uh, dress up formally, but you do not have to attend that um, to attend that event uh, regularly. So mm -hmm. borrowing clothes is could be an option for you. I think so. And how about furniture? Sometimes uh, if there's a party, you know, and people ask you to lend them your um, your table because they know that you have a, a very good table that can be used for parties, you know. Yeah. Um... Sometimes, so sometimes it's okay to lend them that, you know. But people are often lending you because they don't want to pay for renting. Remember that. Like why renting and, and um, having to pay money, but you can lend from others, you know, it's like that. Their mentality, people's mentality is always like that, especially in the Vietnamese community, you know. So what do you think? Well, I think... Well, I think this question also regard like borrowing money from the bank, you know. Like oh. imagine if you start a business, if you have to buy an apartment or a house, a lot of the time you will not have enough money to buy them. And when you have enough money, the price of the property will have increased a lot. Remember that. So um, it's a very common situation where people borrow money from banks, you know. So what do you think about that? Well, I think it's, it can be an option because you know, when sometimes when you borrow money from your friends or relatives, it mm -hmm. could mm, like maybe sometimes they do not will they are not willing to give you that because they also have their own family to take care of. Mm -hmm. So the bank is mm, a good choice, and uh, yeah, and you will have time. I think you will have more time to pay off than and a much more reliable source of um, uh, yes source for you to yes yeah, it's, it's also really re reliable for you to borrow from mm -hmm. i think so too now so why is lending money to others a risky thing to do well, i think um in this um uh, Modern world, I think money is world. world. This modern world. World. Uh, Ow, money... In this modern world. World. Yes, in this modern world. What about it? Yeah, money plays a significant role. And many people, like they. 
many people they like pay much attention to their money mm -hmm. and when you lend uh, when you borrow money from them uh, when uh, when and when lending money to others maybe you can lose you can either lose the relationship mm -hmm. or lose the money you give as well uh, because there are many people who even close to you they borrow money from you but then you, they for they forget or they in they do not have the intention to give them back because they feel like mm, it is our responsibility to lend them that money that we should take care of them no matter what and they do not need to return that money to us because uh, because they feel like they don't have to and we will have other uh, we will have an, and we will earn money quickly more quickly than them so they and will also refuse some people they think that, that some people they think that they can get away with the money that they borrow you you know by making a fuss by um throwing a tantrum you know just like children some people they think that it's like that you know and they think that because they are so there's so much trouble so we want they're asking for the money back you know you know you never know that people can act that way so you know in, so should people borrow money to buy expensive things why why not well, I think it depends on what kind of thing that what kind of expensive expensive things that uh, people buy. Um, maybe uh, when it comes to some reasonable reason, uh, some reasonable uh, factors like when you buy, uh, like when you buy uh, something necessary to you mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's sometimes people have to receive medical treatment and they have to um, buy a lot of expensive um, machines in order to um, help them get through the uh, bad situation mm -hmm. and when it comes to your health i think it is necessary for you necessary for you to borrow so someone for money Mm -hmm. but right. when yeah when people buy exp uh, expensive but um, unnecess unnecessary things like um, maybe due to their own interest like makeup or clothes um, i think people will i think it is uh I think it is not um, important to borrow money to buy those exp expensive things because there are many more problems that you have to deal with other than those um, items, though, those uh, desires of yourself. Mm -hmm. mm. I see. Okay, let's do something else now. <clears throat> Uh, this was a tough topic, isn't it? Yeah. A tough one for you, I, I guess. So let's try um, something else. Hmm. Let's try 61. Describe a quiet place, okay? 61, describe a quiet place. You should say where it is. When you go there, what you do there and explain why it is a quiet place and why you like it. Okay, and then part three, do you think that quietness is good for people? Think about what people can do with quietness. Can they uh, gather their thoughts? Can they gather their uh, thoughts better? Can they be more creative? when it's too quiet, you know? And what do you think? 
Do you think that everybody needs some time by themselves and in a quiet place? Why, why not? Think about introverts, extroverts, and ambiverts. People who are in the middle between introvert and extrovert are called ambiverts. Người hướng nội, hướng ngoại và hướng giữa giữa. Okay, and think about the fact that everybody has uh, something called social battery, you know. So it's the amount uh, of time you can uh, you can endure being in a social situation where you have to talk and listen to people a lot. Nó gọi là cái lượng thời gian mình phải chịu nổi nên khi mà mình nói chuyện với người khác và phải lắng nghe họ hoài. Nó gọi là cái social battery. So if your social battery is low, you don't want to be with people anymore. You just want to retreat to your room, retreat or to your quiet place, you know. So extrovert have a very high social battery, but introvert has a low but social battery most of the time, you know. Think about that. So it explains why some, uh, even though extrovert have a very high social battery, they thrive they thrive when being in uh, social situations and parties you know but it doesn't mean that they don't need time alone you know they do need some time by themselves and in a quiet place too in order to to heal in order to reflect the same like chim nghiệm Think about that one I just said. Now, so do you think city should be more quiet? Why, why not? Okay, you have some time to think about this one. All right, Miss Ho, please describe a quiet place. So I'm going to talk about a cafe shop, a really quiet cafe place. Cafe shop or a cafe, careful. You have a cafe or a coffee shop. There's nothing called a cafe shop, okay? Yeah, a coffee shop. Um, and which... Uh, so I'm going to talk about the coffee shop, uh, which is located on the outskirts of the city where I live. It is a bit far from work from my neighborhood because where uh, the place I, where I live is one of the most crowded parts of the city. So I found it a bit hard to find the place. And I first learned about this place when, thanks to a friend of mine who has the same interests as me, that uh, she loves finding quiet places to go and relax and sometimes even study. And when I go there, I was really impressed by, I was really impressed by the, uh, by the colors and the relaxing background music, making me feel really comfortable as if I had been, as if I was At home mm -hmm. and I often go there to study because I feel like it gives me it, it can boost my energy my concentration and it helps me to be more productive mm -hmm. and the facilities are state-of-the-art ah state-of-the-art yeah and it can satisfy my needs although the place is not really famous, but because it is not famous, there are not many people going there. So I always choose it to be my all time favorite destination to uh -huh. go and relax. I see. So do you think that quietness is good for people? Why, why not? Well, I think uh, it depends on uh, each individual. I mean, some people, they love quietness because they can um, 
have time for themselves. They can sit down and gather their, gather their thoughts better. And they can think about all the things that happened to them and they will um, assess or like find a way to um, improve their life or mm -hmm. to go through those uh, situations. Although uh, also uh, quietness can help people to concentrate more and be more creative to do what they want. Um, however, there are some people who do not like quietness. Maybe they love the uh, dynamic atmosphere of uh, the dynamic as atmosphere, and they feel like uh, they feel more like themselves when they um, be when they are in noisy places. Uh -huh. So, and I think, and they believe that they can, they can the noisy places can boost their energy can help them to cheer up after many mm, hardships that they have been through. So I think whether quietness is good for people, it depends on uh, it depends on the personality of uh, people themselves. Mm -hmm. I see the personality of people themselves. I see. <laughs> Okay, so um, I see. So do you think everybody needs some time by themselves and in the quiet place? Why, why not? Well, from my perspective, I think that everybody needs some time by themselves and in a quiet place. Even though they are introverts, extroverts, or ambiverts, I think everyone needs to spend some time for themselves in order to in order to like assess things that they have been through or just to relax and um, think about uh, think about their life to heal to reflect and moreover they are the uh, um, And moreover, the social battery is uh, is different for everyone. Uh -huh. Sometimes uh, people can there are, there are many people who can um, endure a lot of time talking, being in quiet, uh, being in noisy places, and they tend to feel better to thrive when. Um, getting involved in social activities like uh, such as parties or uh, being in public uh -huh. in the public yeah yeah but uh, there are many people who like they just they cannot uh, spend much time being with many people in noisy places but they need more time to be in quiet place to gather themselves, but uh, in other way, I think <clears throat> still everyone needs some time for themselves and in a quiet place to um, have like to make time for themselves to um, think and to heal. Right, I see. Okay, so um, do you think city should be more quiet? Why, why not? Well, I think um, uh, I think whether cities should be more quiet depends on um, depends on the on it on each person. Mm -hmm. I think there are many citizens who want their cities to be um, noisy, to be um, dynamic, to be crowded, uh -huh. because they feel like the point of living in cities is to be um, involved in social activities, to attend, um, to attend 
uh, to enjoy the time of being in mm -hmm. uh, in uh, to be in in among people among other people and they believe it is a way to like motivate them to um, to uh, try harder in life and they feel like it being in a noisy places for them is also a way to relax to uh, like to boost up their energy or to um, make them feel better after yeah. many situations uh, however there are many citizens who want their cities to be more quiet because they they feel like the noisy the noise of the cities cannot uh, hinder them from uh, being productive uh -huh. and they also have to like put up with uh, many uh, noises like from uh, construction sites or from uh, or from like uh, conflicts or dramas in their daily life and it just I think they feel like it um, degrades their quality of life but i think living in the cities itself is not doesn't mean to be quiet because cities are cities um, include a large number of people and the more people there are in the cities i think the, the more crowded the noisier the cities get and sometimes it and it is um, a feature of the cities unlike the rural areas so i think it depends on people whether the cities should be more quiet mm -hmm. i see <clears throat> right okay that's 61 for you okay please um now let's do 63 okay describe an interesting experience you have had interesting experience so you should say <clears throat> what it was when it happened why it was interesting and explain how you felt about that experience so part three is also about interesting experiences as well do you think that people need to have more interesting experiences in their life why why not think about what interesting experiences can help you to reflect to understand life better, to, to not feel bored, to learn lessons, you know? So think about that. And then also to be more open-minded, you know? Because if you don't have any interesting experiences in your life, your life is just so boring. And you feel like, if, even if you are young, you can feel like you are 70 or 80 years old, you know? So think about that and uh, give some examples of interesting experiences. <clears throat> okay, so what can be the benefits of having different experiences? Hmm, think about what I just said. I think this one, quest this question is actually quite similar to this one in some way, but not all experiences are good. You know, some experience can be traumatic, traumatic, traumatic. Traumatic means like they, they cause a lot of pain and fear, you know. Những trải nghiệm rất là kinh hoàng, gây ra nhiều cái nỗi đau và sợ hãi. Some experience can be that, like that. But <clears throat> because of bad experience, people uh, become mature, you know, <clears throat> to become more mature. But if you have a pleasant experiences, that are different, it helps you to see life as a colorful and something that's worth living. So think about those things. Not all experiences are good. It can be bad experience as well. And do you think that everybody should travel abroad? Why, why not? So think about traveling abroad for studying, for working, for uh, just living in a different country from where you're from. So, uh, and think about, <clears throat> Think about the expenses, think about the money, of course. 
think about uh, the fact that not all families have the financial uh, let's think about their financial situation you know not all family has the means to travel abroad even though traveling traveling abroad can be good can be bad I've, I've personally seen some bad experiences of people traveling abroad you know they become worse they become depressed they become addicted to something addicted to drugs một số người đi nước ngoài tới cuối cùng họ trở nên là nghiện thuốc nghiện ma túy nha không đâu là chơi bạn sao or hang out with the wrong crowd <cười> so not all the time it's beautiful no not all the time you have to think about that and think about the fact that not everybody uh, fit in <cười> fit in with uh, foreign cultures you know không phải ai cũng phù hợp với văn hóa nước ngoài đâu not everyone fit in with foreign cultures <cười> Um, okay, you have some time now. All right, please describe an interesting experience you have had, please. So I'm going to talk about the time when I have to when I had to stand and give a speech to debate in front of uh -huh. many people. Well, it was about a year ago. My school. My school hosts a debate competition and I at first I didn't uh, intend to attend that competi that competition but with my teachers in, in with my teachers and my family's encouragement I decided encouragement. to encouragement encourage, encouragement I decided to uh, take part in the contest well, I was really shy at that time, so I didn't think I could do that. However, when I actually stood on the stage mm -hmm. in front of the judges and the audiences, I didn't feel scared as I expected. I think my desire to win is just much more than my fear. And I, and the reason why I think it was interest, interesting is because it helped me a lot in strengthening my logical thinking. It, and I have learned how to build a logical argument, how to um, pay attention to the speeches of the opponent, or how to find uh, the holes in their speech. Uh -huh. The holes and in a speech, you mean to like find a uh, to, to find the, the mistakes in their yeah, logic, in the mistakes no? in their speech, or the mistakes in their logic. I think it's better, yeah. Find the mistakes <coughs> in the logic, the logic side of being long, no, to find the mistakes yeah. in their logics. Now, so how you felt about it? Um, although I didn't win, but I think I had a life-changing experience hmm. I felt life-changing is very strong way to say I think don't you think because like it helped me to feel more confident like it helped me to like think that nothing is impossible that I am capable of doing anything that I want and I think it can help me a lot in uh, in my future of pursuing any goals of mine so mm -hmm. i think it is really it, it was really an interesting experience interesting me. and really interesting experience mm. okay so do you think that people need to have more interesting experiences in their life why why not well from my perspective i think that it is necessary for people to have more interesting experiences interesting, interesting interesting experiences in their life well the reason is that when you are exposed to many different situations mm -hmm. i think it will help the, you to understand life to understand people so that you can like be more cautious or you can 
broaden your knowledge in various ways. You can also learn about you can also learn about how things work in life, how to prevent mistakes or how to or how to be uh, or how to be more uh, successful in life. Uh, interesting interesting experiences also like help you to become more open minded. Like you can uh, you can adapt to any new viewpoints of mm -hmm. other people. And if you do not have many interesting experiences in your life, mm -hmm. I think your life will be boring and you will... It's super boring. Some, some life is yeah. super boring, repetitive, you know? Repetitive yeah, you... life, just like Mr. John. <laughs> and you are not because, like uh, yeah. motivated to try. You, you feel like... Uh, uh, everything is uh, boring and you do not want to make any attempts to change it to try harder so I think yeah it is uh, people should um, have more need to have more ex interesting experiences uh, throughout their life <clears throat> okay, so do you think everybody should travel abroad? Why, why not? I think, um, uh, well, in my opinion, I think uh, traveling abroad brings about both advantages and disadvantages. And I think not it is not really necessary, necessary, necessary. For, necessary. necessary for everybody to travel abroad. Uh -huh. There are some good and bad signs of that. Sometimes uh, it is undeniable that traveling abroad for studying or working uh, uh -huh. gives you a better chance to thrive in your life. Uh, you have uh, more opportunities to uh, expose to expose to different cultures to oh, learn sure. more, to learn more and to have more experiences than you have in your own country. Uh -huh. I see. So how about like, um, if some families, a lot, you know, there's some stories of families in Vietnam who, who borrow money from banks so that their children can be sent to other countries to work, you know, very bad experiences because some some companies they scam those families. You know, have you heard about those stories? Yeah. Of course you did. So and, think about what do you think about them? Yeah. Uh, and uh, however, there are many bad signs of um, traveling abroad. I mean, um, there are many families who do not have um, stable financial background, uh -huh. but they still want to step to send their children to. Um, foreign countries uh -huh. to because they believe that it will help them to have a better chance to you, their career. Uh -huh. uh, better chance of career, better have, chance of life, something like that. Yeah. You know? And they have to borrow everywhere from the banks, from their families and relatives in order to um, in order to send their children there. Uh -huh. But uh, there are many companies who scam and they deceive those people into spending money on those uh, plans to send them to the foreign countries with many um, uh -huh. with many potential um, advantages that will help their children to uh, have a better life and uh, it causes a lot of trouble for both uh, for the family and also for the children of course and sometimes it's dangerous for 
those people to uh to be sold into yeah uh how can I say <clears throat> human trafficking human trafficking ring những cái vòng đó, nó gọi là những cái băng đảng mà chuyên đang đi buôn người đó. you have human trafficking rings and they are kidnapped they are forced to forced to work uh works forced to work as slaves you know bị bắt làm việc như nô lệ luôn á and then they can become sex slaves some a lot of the time it can happen that way you know so some experience can be traumatic as i told you so what can be the benefits of having different experiences then i think um there are many different many different experiences uh that are good and also there are some bad ones mm -hmm. well uh first i think both good or bad experiences will help you to become more mature in your life uh good experiences will help will help you to view life more colorful or you will feel it's worth living uh -huh. and as a result you can force yourself to strive harder in your life in order to um, get better and better um, and have more of those um, good experiences um, however there are some bad experiences uh, sometimes they do you good because they will help you to learn from your mistakes mm -hmm. like when you buy something online and you get scammed and you will learn that you next time you buy something online you will have to check the you will have to be more cautious about the shops or about the products that you are going to buy whether mm -hmm. it is good enough or you can also check the check the yes uh, the the like the comments the um uh the feedbacks of other buyers uh -huh. i uh, say the feedback but about of other people you know not all the people's feedback can work for you remember that so yeah, but you have yes. different viewpoints and you can like assess from that i guess uh -huh. i agree now okay let's try another one this is 63 <clears throat> um okay let's try something else have you watched the video i told you about crime and history before yes but um okay i'll give you a bit more time to work on them before we go there okay yeah let's say let's do 67 Okay, 67. Describe a bicycle, motorbike, or car trip that is interesting. Bicycle trip, motorbike trip, or car trip that is interesting. You should say um, where you would like to go, how you would like to go there, who you would like to go with. So it means these things haven't happened yet, you know. And explain why you would like to go there by car, by motorbike, or by bike. Okay, so talk three about a uh, trip. So do you think people should do a lot of research about their travel destinations before they go? Why, why not? Like think about hotels, think about accommodations, think about um, what's up? Uh, places to eat, places to see, like plan their trip very meticulously before they do, well, before they go, do you think it's a good idea? Or some people, they just prefer uh, to play by ear, you know? to play by ear this is a saying it means that they like to take things as they go Sao cũng được. like they just take things as they go they don't plan anything so what do you think and think about things that can happen because of different approaches like that you know and what do you think is the best means of transport on any trip? Why? Think about boat, think about train, 
part in the public transport, uh, like taxis, uh, uh, airplane, buses, like uh, double decker bus, you know, double decker, double decker bus with um, with sleeping compartments with uh, with bed, something like that. Every night, I'm going to go something like that. It happens. <coughs> Okay, so what kinds of travel documents should we carry when traveling? Think about, of course, passport, your ID card, ID card, passport, and think about special permit. Because sometimes people want to travel to special areas that require special permit. This is a noun, permit, okay, the noun. The verb is permit, but the noun permit is a special piece of paper that you need to enter a place. Like, for example, it's not easy to enter into, let's say, uh, some special areas in, that belongs to the military or that belongs to the government, something like that, you know. So you need that. And then, of course, think about um, if you go to America, you need uh, doctors prescription for your pills for any kind of drugs any kind of pills you carry on your um, for any kind of pills you carry on your airplane with you you know a lot of paperwork trust me and think about if you bring in any kind of pets you need pets passport or you and your mail Pets passport as well. Think about that. And also some kind of uh, vaccination uh, and health books. So super but so vaccine, yeah, health vaccination and health books for pets and also for you as well. Think about that. And uh, if you travel on a special occasion, like when you travel for work, you need to present some paper from your company, something like that. Remember, it's not just simple, like bringing an ID card and a passport. No, it's not like that, you know? It's not that simple. It depends also on, on what occasion you're traveling uh, for, what purpose, and where you're traveling to as well, who you're traveling with. Okay, should people travel with a lot of personal belonging? Why, why not? Think about some people that just travel with so many uh, things in their luggage. Oh, careful. Remember that, oh, remember that the word luggage, it's uncountable, okay? So if you want to count it, you have to say a piece of luggage and pieces of luggage, okay? And think about suitcase. Of course, suitcase are countable. You can say suitcases, no problem. Okay, think about the fact that people can buy a lot of, a lot of items at the, time, at the place of arrival or not. Think about those things. Okay, you have some time to think now. Okay, please describe a bicycle, a motorbike, or a car trip. That is interesting, please. <clears throat> well, a trip that I find interesting Interesting, interesting. Interesting is a motorbike trip with my friends to Sapa, which is a mountainous area in Vietnam. Well, I have been thinking about this trip for a long time, since I was about uh, 14 years old. Uh, I, think, I think it's going to be an amazing trip. Do, uh, despite its long distance between my city, Nambi city, and Seba. And I really hope that uh, in during our trip, we will have a stop over uh, to like experience the views, the mountains, or the fresh air of the, of the place we are going to visit. And I really want to go with my friends because we 
because we have shared the same intention for a long time ago. And mm -hmm. I prefer a motorbike trip because I really like adventurous, adventurous things. And with a motorbike, it's so much easier to travel from one destination to another mm -hmm. to um, do the size. And it's much more convenient than other vehicles. Uh, and I think traveling by motorbike is also like it because our budget is not too is uh is not too much and mm. traveling by motorbike will be the best option for us mm. and when we and when we travel by motorbike mm. we will have we will be able to enjoy the fresh air of the mountainous areas and we can also and we can also like um, stop whenever we want uh, and the main reason is because I when I travel long distances by car I will always have disease so mostly I will prefer a motorbike trip over a car trip Mm -hmm. to go to Sapa. I see. So do you think people should do a lot of research about their travel destinations before they go? Why, why not? Well, I think it is necessary for people to do uh, research about their travel destinations before they go. Mm. I think they should find some information about the hotels, the ac accommodation, or the food, or the places, the the places that they are going to visit. Uh, they have to like uh, plan meticulous, meticulously in order to be able to enjoy the uh, enjoy the trip in as um, as uh, well as possible. Because when you travel to somewhere completely different from where you live. It is easy for you to get lost in the places or and sometimes you do not really understand the culture and maybe you will have some actions that may um, that may be called that may be considered a disrespect to the people from that uh -huh. destination. The destination, yeah. Mm. All right, so <clears throat> what do you think are the best means of transport on any trip and why? I think uh, the best means of transport on any kind of trip is a double decker buses, uh, is double decker buses because, um, because you can, because uh, in, for example, in long distance, trips uh, you can rest and you will not feel tired and exhausted after a long trip and you will be able to enjoy the views to uh, travel in to uh, enjoy the views and the destinations that you go How, and also for short distance uh, destination it's also a good option because uh, because it also gives you some rest and some people are do not have the good physical condition and they will easily uh, do not and they will easily feel tired and dizzy uh -huh. after traveling so I think uh, those buses are uh, are excellent choice for your trips. Mm -hmm. So what kinds of travel documents should we carry when traveling then? Well, I think there are many kinds of travel documents that mm -hmm. we should carry when traveling. It's it also depends on uh, what what kind of 
trips that you are going to or where you are going to the places and uh, the people that you are traveling with but um, in general you will need uh, an id card a passport um, and sometimes when you um, enter somewhere um, that is um, that is uh, limited to um, many people you will have to uh, carry a special permit maybe in military bases or in governmental uh, buildings mm. uh, also when you in many places due to the um, COVID-19 uh, epidemic uh, you will have to carry a vaccination or health books uh -huh. uh, along with you in order to like uh, ensure that you are not uh, that you do not carry cor coronavirus into uh -huh. the places that you of are course you to. have to have vaccination um, was it called certificate or something like that and I think it's yeah and sometimes you have to be registered on apps in order to show that you were vaccinated of course okay <clears throat> all right so uh should people travel with a lot of personal belonging why why not <clears throat> <laughs> well i think it um depends on whether that uh, trip is it depends on the time you spend on traveling, uh, whether it is a long or a short trip. Well, in terms of uh, a long trip, like you have to spend um, about weeks or months in that places, then you will have to carry with you a lot of personal belonging. Mm. Uh -huh. Because uh, there are some items that you cannot found that you cannot find in the destination that you are going to, uh, and these um, products only uh, available are only available in your hometown. So uh -huh. it is necessary to buy your personal belonging because. Uh, be, to to uh, carry a lot of personal belonging because they can there are many like unexpected situations that can happen when you travel so it's uh, better that you um, just take them with you in case of uh, emergency uh, however during short trips I think it is um, I think if we carry a lot of, if people carry a lot of personal belonging during short trips, uh, it will cause a lot of uh, inconvenience to ourselves because it, it, I think it can be really heavy and you, maybe you will lost, you will lose them in your trip. So I think it's not really good to uh, travel with a lot of personal belonging when you mm, are in short trips but uh, in uh, longer trips trips i think it is quite uh, necessary important to you uh -huh. i see okay we can stop here now <clears throat> okay i'll see you later then next week see you on monday Goodbye, see you. Goodbye, see you.